Hey everybody, it's Lisa Debates and me. <laughs> the topic that we wanted to discuss with all of you who want to join in is essentially, you know, we all have older work and, you know, maybe it's up in the attic or we're trying to store it and we've got like a hundred paintings and we don't know what to do with them. So, and Lisa is the one who reached out to me last night via email. Lisa, talk about what's going on with you. Well, I'm, you know, I enter lots of competitions and then I show in different galleries and, and so I've got all this work, you know, I created so much work last year and the year before during COVID and I had lots of sales, but not everything sold. And now, you know, with working through Art and Success Pro, my work is changing, which, you know, your, your work should change, right? Um, but it is changing drastically. And so when I look at my old stuff, you know, sometimes I do have really good feelings about a couple pieces, you know, especially sentimental for when I made them and maybe who I was Zooming with, because of course I was Zooming with somebody when I made them, right? <laughs> but um, they are different. They are so different from what I'm creating now. And so it's like, I don't even know. I mean, you know, when, it, when you look at my work, whether it was then or now, you can tell it's me, right? Because I just have a a certain way about how I do it. So I could possibly, you know, hang them together. They, but I'm not sure they look cohesive. You had said you weren't sure they look cohesive. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, do I need to add something to them to make them look cohesive with what is now? Or do I just let them go? Or what do I do? What, what do you do in that case? <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, and, and if any of you guys have comments or suggestions, because the whole point of streaming here is so that we can get your feedback as well. Carol says she, Carol Wade says she is painting over her old work unless she just still loves it. Okay, cool. Yeah, because, you know, some of them I, I still like, and then there's others that I'm just like, oh. Lisa, what, what, what do you think you're going to do? What do you want to do with your older paintings? I don't know, because... I, that's hard. That's hard to paint over them, you know, or even if you go with uh, like, cause my paintings, I could probably use as backgrounds, you know, uh, yeah. cause it's more history, right? More history. As long as I haven't got cold wax on them. And I did do a few with cold wax on top as a sealer. Um, so I might not be able to do anything with those unless I have to, it's hard to take that cold wax seal off. I have one. I am taking it off. It's a 24 by 48. And we've got half of it off and we got tired. Our little arms were tired yeah. of scrubbing. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause I think a lot of people probably are doing like this, this four step process, right. On an acrylic painting, like we do pouring medium first, knock it back with steel wool. Um, and then the cold wax medium, and then you buff it, right? So if you have an acrylic painting that has that finish, yes, if you want to proceed into cold wax and oil, which would be a great way to repurpose your panel, not just that, but I mean, you're actually just building more on top of the older painting. The older painting, whether you loved it or not, you know, maybe you loved it at one time, you don't love it anymore, but uh, that whatever is there, it becomes history for going forward. And so what I suggest, and I think I showed this in my course that's called the, the uh, painting in a series with complex color. I made the mistake. I didn't sign my name until I realized it was too late because I already done the four step process. There's cold wax on the top. And it's like, that's hard to sign your name on top of cold wax in this case, because it was an acrylic painting. So what I did was I demonstrated how I removed that top cold wax coating. And the way to do that is, again, get out your water and your steel wool, and you're gonna kind of go in reverse now. So the first thing is to use that steel wool to get it off as much as you can, and then get out some, in my case, I use Gamsol because it's an odorless mineral spirit. And even if you didn't do the steel wool part, uh, it does remove cold wax medium because that is one of the solvents that is going to work. So let's say that you do that, you put the Gamsol or odorless mineral spirit or mineral spirit or turpentine or whatever it is, and, it, and you remove it, but you're not sure yet if you've gotten it all off. 
what I would do since you're going to paint over it anyways, is I would get out some, a sandpaper and just sand it so that you actually see that acrylic being sanded back a little, right? So because it's going to be an underpainting anyways, you don't expect it to be completely as it was. And then if you know you're sanding into the acrylic, you know, you've gotten rid of all the cold wax medium. But the next step I would do then you, you could proceed into going with cold wax and oil again, but I like the idea of putting down the Liquitex clear gesso first, let it dry. You could even do two coats if you want. Now proceed into the cold wax and oil so that that is a, an absorbent layer. Um, the other option is when you sand it back, that is a physical texture. Like, you know, if you looked at that with a microscope, you'd see these little up and down divots. That's from the sandpaper. And that can work. But the using the Liquitex Clear Gesso is just a little bit more of a uh, absolute way to make sure that your cold wax and oil is going to stay there. Right. That makes sense? Well, yeah. Um, so when we are taking the cold wax off this acrylic painting, I was barely using any of the stuff you mentioned because I was afraid if I used too much, it would take off part of the acrylic. It but will. Is that it will. Okay. So well, we were barely, we were using the, um, what are the things you feel well? Yeah. We were using that with that stuff. Actually, and, I take it back. You're saying you use steel wool with Gamsol or odorless yes. nail spirit? Oh, Gamsol. okay. Sorry. I misspoke. The cool okay. thing about Gamsol, odorless mineral spirit, mineral spirit, turpentine, they're all kind of in the same class is that they actually don't take off acrylic. I, I made a mistake. Yeah. I was thinking of alcohol. Alcohol is actually more the enemy of acrylic. Yes. Then these are the solvents. It's weird, you know? Yeah. So yeah, if you're using steel wool with Gamsol and you're saying you scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and couldn't get it off. Well, I mean, we, we were, but I was, I was afraid because I didn't know. And so I was barely using any Gamsol. Yeah. And so I thought, that's why I thought, Oh, I'm going to ask, do I need to use more? So it's easier because, <laughs> Oh, we were scrubbing and our poor little arms were so tired. And, and I, so we stopped and so we can use more. The other thing. Well, yeah. And the other thing is that were you working, was it on canvas or panel canvas? Okay. Well, that's the other consideration. Remember if things are on canvas um, and you're doing all this stuff to take off the cold wax finish, then you wanna proceed into cold wax and oil. In general, cold wax and oil is kind of meant for rigid surface. Well, if I'm gonna take off the cold wax, I'm gonna just paint on with acrylic then. Okay. If I'm gonna go to the treble of it, I'm just gonna use acrylic afterwards, but. Then if that's the case, you really have to make sure you've gotten rid of all the cold wax. So. What I would do again is use the Gamsol and the steel wool and normally use steel wool and water, but in this case, go ahead and use the Gamsol. Circular motions, the entire thing. And then <clears throat> the last thing you would do before you proceed into acrylic would then be to uh, sand it with like some high grit sandpaper. And you okay. need to see that acrylic coming off. Okay. Um, even if it's just a little bit, cause then you know you've removed all the cold wax medium. Okay. I can definitely feel a difference from one to the other, but I haven't done any testing or anything. I noticed that Judith said that if hers had not been varnished, that she just paints over with acrylic or collage. Oh. And, but she wonders, should she use gesso, clear gesso before beginning in New York? Can she just go ahead and start painting if she's never put the cold wax on? Yeah, if it's acrylic on acrylic, you never have to worry about any kind of layer of any kind. It's only when you transition from acrylic over to cold wax and oil um, that you definitely want to make sure that you've done whatever you need to do to prepare that surface uh, to accept that. So Judith, are you planning on going, moving into oil and cold wax or just? Um, I think she just said that. Oh, she says most are acrylic for her. Yeah, yeah, it right. was just acrylic. So, cool. yeah. And then Shelly says if you have a cold wax finish over acrylics, can you just go back in to continue the painting using cold wax and oil? So, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. And if, <clears throat> again, that, that's not necessarily recommended because think about it. Uh, you, the, the original painting was acrylic. You put a very thin layer of cold wax medium over it and you buffed it. So 
if you then think, oh, now my painting's a cold wax medium painting and I can proceed on to cold wax with oil, what you don't really realize is that just that thin layer of cold wax medium is nothing like, say, a gessoed surface. Um, the gessoed surface on, say, an ampersand panel that's meant for cold wax and oil is highly absorbent and it's, it's prepared to take the oil and cold wax and like keep it in place. That thin layer of cold wax medium, while it works great on an acrylic painting as a final sealing option, it's not gonna be comparable at all to a gessoed surface. So that's why um, what I was saying to Lisa is that you do have to remove the final coating that sealed your acrylic painting. And then I would take that extra step You've got two choices. One is to sand back with a coarse sandpaper until you see some acrylic moving away. That would be the, the least favorite option to move into cold wax and oil. And then what you're dealing with is uh, a physical bond between the scuffed up acrylic surface and cold wax and oil. But the more preferred option would be Liquitex, clear, gesso, let it dry on top of that surface of your painting that you just removed the cold wax medium. And now it's as if you have a brand new panel. It does have some color from your acrylic painting underneath, but now it's, it's absorbent and it's ready to not just physically hold your cold wax and oil, but uh, I mean, it's still gonna be a physical connection just because it is an acrylic gesso but it's so much more gritty. If you looked at it close up, it's, it's like this, gray hills and valleys and your cold wax and oil goes into those things and it's not gonna flake off your painting. Yeah. Okay, so um, other options, like there's reworking a panel, there's, um, you know, like some things I've done, I look back at my body of work and as I was telling Lisa last night, I, number one, I would never throw anything away. Um, I don't think that I would ever want to do that. I, I look at each painting in my my pathway here as a snapshot, even the stuff I did when I was in eighth grade, right? You know, um, and it, it just kind of makes me smile. And, and the other thing is it makes you kind of feel like you can see your progress over time. But I, but if you're running out of space, that's the trouble. And like, I'm, that's going to happen to me after this show. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do with all this work that doesn't stop? <laughs> um, so I have given away um, work as gifts, obviously. And another option is to reach out to like a hospital and say, hey, do you guys need any colorful work for your walls? Now, as long as you're not embarrassed by it, you don't want to like get work that you're embarrassed by. But, you know, you might say, I like this, but it's just not me anymore. Of course, it's not you anymore, because that was like 20 years ago. But um, these public organizations, like if, you, if you're used to going into town and, and going in a building that has nothing on their walls, or it's kind of like pretty bad, they might be more than happy to just and I look at it as, hey, would you like to borrow my work? I mean, you don't have to insure it. Would you like to just hang it on your walls since I see you don't have anything on your walls? That way, you, or a friend. Maybe you've got friends who love your older work, but they're like, they're not so hot in your new work. That's happened to me. And it's like, um, hey, I've got all this older work. Do you want to just hang it on your walls? And even if you forget about it, so what? It's out of your studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm... <clears throat> And then you can also sell it for a much reduced price and just say, hey, I'm trying to have like a big sale and say, I'm just trying to make room in my studio. Um, you're going to get a great deal. You know, if you have a website, you can post this on your website and say, hey, I normally don't do this, but I am making room for new inventory and I want, I want to, I want to move the work out. It's a great deal to get my older work, you know, and that's a little bit of money and then you've got the space. Right. Well, you know, last year, um, I had been thinking already toward the end of last year that I maybe I had a couple pieces out in a place, you know, public venue. And I thought, you know, when I get that back, I'm going to paint over it. and then I'll be darned if the two of them didn't sell, you know, <laughs> and I thought, well, who am I to think I should paint over them? Because here they're selling, you know, and and um, so that was the other thing. <laughs> Well, and that's the choice you have to make, whether you have like some, if you have a website and you have a place to put older work that you 
you know, even if you don't feel the same way about it, you're willing to maybe discount the price or, or not. I mean, you give it a certain length of time. If it's been on there for years and years and years, you're like, okay, maybe it's not going to sell. Uh, but you can also put a special discount, right? Um, galleries do that all the time. It's amazing because galleries take 50% on average. And yet if somebody's a, a collector, they still come in there expecting a deal, you know, and especially if they're a repeat buyer and then the gallery feels like, okay, yeah, they want to keep that client happy. So they're willing to, they'll reach out to the artists. Like usually ahead of time, the artists, when they sign their contract, it's like the artist is like, yeah, I'm willing to give up to 20% off up to 10% off your discretion. But, you know, and that, that should be okay because collectors are some, you know, they actually kind of deserve to me that that's okay. They deserve a discount when they're spending so much money, not just on your work, but everybody's work and, and the gallery wants to promote that. So uh, you make those decisions though, when you drop off your work at the gallery, there should be a contract. Um, what are some other things you can do? Um, anybody else out there have ideas of what to do with older work? Oh. Jennifer, I've been painting over old works. I paint over the varnish and it seems fine. Is that okay? What kind of varnish, Jennifer? Are you talking about um, acrylic varnish on acrylic or are you talking about the cold wax medium varnish over acrylic? There's a big difference. We definitely want to hear from you. Um, and then Jan Hoffman says, I had a friend who donated some of her art to homeless shelters. Isn't that awesome? See, I think that that is such a, a great way to solve your problem. You can feel really good about donating. Oh, and then the other thing, well, you know, there are auctions and, and everybody, you know, doing a fundraiser wants art to be donated. You might have a certain section that's for art you're going to donate to them. And in, in some cases, you'll even get a percentage kickback, but um, the higher the uh, don't like if it's a museum with an auction, you definitely don't want to put your worst work in there. Plus you probably won't get it in there anyways, because they're going to be really selective. But if it's uh, the local humane society looking for artwork or, you know, food for the homeless or whatever it might be. Sure. I mean, have a stash that's ready to be kind of gifted away for that. And the tax write off actually is only materials. It's never the selling price. Right. But so what, right? You've made, I think the room in your studio is so in a way sacred. <laughs> you really have to make choices. And um, yeah, Jennifer, I've been painting over the old works, um, but you, yeah, I still don't see what she- Yeah, it said acrylic. <clears throat> okay, so Jennifer donates to fundraisers regularly. Oh, she's saying acrylic. Yeah, if it's acrylic over acrylic, Jennifer, definitely. You don't have to do anything. You can go off into any direction you want. Yeah, that's fine. I read um, a really big, long article about varnishes and the different kinds because you know, everybody's like, oh, no, I got to remove the varnish before I paint over, but you don't. As yeah. long as it's the water-soluble varnish that we use or, you know, water-based, I guess is the word, yeah. varnish that we use, you don't have to remove it. You just keep on painting. I've never understood why people feel an acrylic painting needs to be varnished either, because if you're using um, acrylic gloss or matte medium, it's kind of like it's baked in to the process, right? Well, I think that on the matte medium bottle jar things, it says this shouldn't be the final oh. thing. I, I don't, I use matte medium only for collage when, when like for the snail mail project where it mattered if I, if it oozed out from underneath the collage paper and it's shiny, that's why I wanted matte. But yeah, I don't, yeah, I can see why maybe that wouldn't be good because it is kind of a cloudy, it's a little cloudy. I mean, right. So, right, yeah. but if it's, if you've only used gloss medium, I don't really see why you'd ever have to put a final varnish um, unless you're just trying to even out the surface, which is what I like yeah. to do for a medium. I'd have okay, to guys. The glass. I don't yeah. Know. So this is meant to be kind of a, just a short <laughs> experiment. But um, how many of you oh. like this? Um, we would definitely like uh, make make it into more an event so more people can know about it. But we just wanted to know: Can you hear us? Okay. Um, do you like this kind of thing where we just show up in Facebook? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, do you see? Jennifer says it's she varnishes to protect from UV and dust. So that is yeah, good. True. Well, there are those special varnishes for acrylic that 
golden makes, and they do say it has a UV component in it, you know, um, but they have pretty special things to follow there. And like, I've just not done that because in, in general, you shouldn't be really hanging your work where it's exposed to the sun in general. You know, I just, that's what I use though. I use the spray UV. Oh, oh okay. So you Golden. do. Finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. I don't, but maybe I should. <laughs> well, because I have a lot of water soluble mark making stuff on there. Yeah. So, um, I actually very rarely remember to put a coat of anything on top. I just spray. Oh, and okay. if I use the spray gloss and light coats, you know, and let it dry and then light coat, oh, then okay. nothing goes, you know, nothing reactivates. So oh. um, now occasionally I have to use your method of laying, you know, down this stuff and right. putting on, but usually I'm able to just spray it with a gloss. And then after I get a couple coats of gloss going both directions, then I do the satin finish on top of that. So what about, can you hold up a bottle of the spray that you use? Because there's so many Krylon, uh, there's Prismacolor, there's like what brand do you use? Do you have- I use Golden. I golden. use Golden. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It's, so it's like a golden UV spray? Yeah, let me go get it just a sec. It's okay. right out here. Cool. Oh, there it is. Gloss and satin. Which do you, do you like uh, both? I start with gloss. because <clears throat> there. I forget. I'll have to look it up. But there's something about gloss that you can spray, like I said, on the stuff that is water soluble. That's not so super reactive and it oh. will set it. Whereas for some reason, if you start with this, maybe it's not so good, but I can't remember. Wow. So I, I always gloss first. And light coats, of course, going both directions. And then I finish with satin because the gloss is just too shiny. Too shiny. So yeah, this just knocks it down. And and it's archival varnish aerosol with UVLs. And, um, you know, protective finish for fine artworks, removable for conservation purposes. I didn't even know that. And of course, good dirt and dust and moisture resistance and a flexible film. So, so do you, can I, can I ask you like when you, when you spray, are you spraying inside your studio or outside? Outside. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably be dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys have to, does it say on your can that it has oh, VOCs? Cause that, that's what you want to be careful about. You guys, those are the volatile organic solvents. Um, does it say to spray outside? That would be the question. It does. Okay. Well, it says use in properly ventilated areas. Uh, yeah. yeah, just, just so you guys know on any can, like whether it's spray paint or what Lisa just showed you, um, any spray of any kind and, and the worst for your health would be these VOCs and that V, V is in violet, O is in, uh, Oscar, C is in Charlie, right? Volatile organic chemicals. Those are these little particles that if they get into your system, they're never going to leave. They're, they're always in there. They, they end up in your brain. <laughs> For most of us, we don't really need VOCs hanging around in our brain because they kind of mess up uh, uh, neurologically. And so I'm like, I'm definitely like, I'm going way outside. I'm going outside. And if it's windy, make sure if you're spraying that it's not spraying into your face. And I also have a respirator on because it's like, I can't afford to have any more VOCs in my body. <laughs> So I probably err on the side of being a little crazy, but I'd rather be a little crazy than more nuts than I already am. <laughs> it says so. contains acetone, propane, in butane, petroleum distillate, solvent, naphtha, and trimethabenzone. Wow. wow. That's, benzene. That, that's like... <laughs> Is that VOCs? Yeah, those are all propane, benzene, uh, whatever those other things were. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that, that, that's an indication that you definitely don't ever even want to spray that inside. Even if you did have good ventilation, good ventilation, when they say that they don't know what you have, you might have just a popped open window and you might be like 10 feet or 20 feet away from it. They have to say that on the can, they don't know what you have. So it's up to you to uh, define what good ventilation is. And it means outside. When I was in art school, they would not, if they caught anybody with a fixative spray inside, they would get completely yelled at. And, you know, they're like, no, go out on the, on the ceiling there outside. And um, I mean, outside on the top floor and spray your work. Okay. So, <laughs> 
Okay, guys. Well, we don't want to keep your uh, from you keep you from painting on a Saturday, but um, thanks for joining in. There's Grayson. Yay! Came in late. Hey, I just Bye. while reading this uh, thing, it says no isolation coat needed. How about that? Say that again. It says no isolation coat needed for the sprays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can be removed for you know the. Um, conservation yeah conservation purposes so that's nice to know you don't have to do an isolation coat you know these isolation coats I, I do really think golden I love that company but I do think they've got a lot of products that they come up with some I'm not sure they're all necessary they might make you feel like you need an isolation coat but I've never used one of those I don't even maybe I'm wrong but if any of you guys use an isolation coat um Jan says that the liquid is much more controlled uh and Minwax is really good. And then uh, let's see, there's another another thing here. Um, I don't wanna miss this comment. It was about the gloss, bringing out the color and the vibrancy, but then the, the satin spray knocks right. back the shine. I think that was- Right, I don't use matte though. She says the matte keeps the shine off. I use satin. Because okay. the mat, the mat does dull a little bit. I found so um, I don't use matte anymore. I just use satin. It does not dull, in my opinion, as much as matte. Okay, um, Lori. As far as um, I think, what we're going to do with this video, um, we might put it on YouTube. I don't know if that'd be good enough for you or not. I'm, I am recording it. I could also like provide it in the uh, Watch and Grow Library. Uh, but as far as like, and and uh, let me think. There. There could be a transcript. Uh, so like the chat. Well, hmm? The comments will still be in the chat though. Yeah, the comments It'll... are here. But um, just so that you guys know uh, any of this stuff that, because it's being recorded and uh, when I upload it to this other website, I get the transcript. So the transcript, if you go through that, uh, the transcript, unlike the chat, right? The chat, we don't even have a chat going here at all with uh, with Lisa and I, because we, it's just she and I. Um, but the transcript, which is available for every single video that's in the Watch and Grow Library, that's in the master classes, you can download the entire transcript of everything I'm saying or whoever's saying, whether it's Cynthia Lee or Lisa Debates, like if they're being interviewed, you can download a transcript so that you can like read through it um, it's not always going to have correct spelling because it's all like it, um, uh, it's uh, the intel artificial intelligence that's picking up, trying to decipher what you say. But things like golden spray and all that kind of stuff, that'll probably be spelled correctly so that you can find that. Nancy McPhee, um, like the liquid better than sprays and use matte, though we'll try satin. Yeah. And OK, thank you, Lori. Any of those would be helpful. And then Jan, polyacrylic now comes in a clear mat. Oh, wow, clear mat. That's interesting. Are you, Jan, is that a, a golden product, the polyacrylic, or is that a different brand? Oh, she uses Minwax polyacrylic protective finish. So it's Minwax. Okay. Polyacrylic. Cool. Yeah, okay. at Lowe's. Yay. Okay. okay, thanks, everybody. We're going to stop the live stream now and uh, have a wonderful Saturday. Bye now.